Well, there are a few different ways to calculate valid preconditions if you're given an assignment and the post condition of a Hoare triple. So typically you'll see something with one assignment. All that means is we're only assigning one variable. So in this case, we are only assigning X. This is our statement or our assignment that would be represented by S in the normal format of a Hoare triple. So you would normally see something like this. And that just means this is your precondition, this is what you're executing, and this is your post condition. So if you begin in a state where your precondition is satisfied and you execute this, then you will terminate in a state where your post condition is satisfied. And that general form can be applied to all of the different examples here. So when you have one assignment, you're only assigning one variable, as is the case here, and you have your post condition, which is R. So in order to calculate the precondition, what we can do is we can take the assignment and we can apply it to the post condition. And that should result in an expression that we can use as a valid precondition for a single assignment, a uh, Hoare triple. And the reason that we apply the substitution to the post condition instead of the precondition is explained in more detail in another video that I'll link below. Um, but basically, it comes down to the fact that in this state, we haven't performed the assignment yet. So it doesn't make sense to switch x for e um, in the initial state because x has not yet been modified to contain e. Um, so that's how it works for one assignment. You can also do multiple assignments as you can with textual substitution. And again, this is explained in a bit more detail in another video, which I'll also link. But what it comes down to is if you have multiple simultaneous assignments, you're going to take two different variables, or more than two, but in this case, just two different variables, x and y, you're assigning them at the same time. So you'll see this notation with x comma y maps to e comma f. That's just like you're taking this expression and mapping it to this, or sorry, this variable. So you're going to map x, you're going to replace all occurrences of x with e, and you're going to replace all occurrences of y with f. So you'll see this notation with the commas. Or you can have multiple sequential assignments, which you'll see denoted like this. Um, that usually actually is a semicolon here in these Hoare triples, but you'll basically see it denoted as two separate, um, separate substitutions, kind of like you see here. And what that means is you have to perform them in order from left to right, because textual substitution is left associative. So that means you have to always go left to right when you see them appearing like this. Um, so let's start off by talking a bit about this one. So in this case, we're swapping out x for e, we're swapping out y for f. So we're going to do both of these at the same time because we're doing a simultaneous substitution. So in order to find our precondition, it's the same idea as it is for one assignment. You're going to take your program, you're going to apply it to the post condition, and that's going to give you a valid precondition. So all this is, is we're taking our post condition, r, and we are applying a textual substitution, um, that we are given from our program S, and that's gonna give us a precondition. And then finally, for multiple se sequential assignments, um, your precondition looks something like this. Uh, an important thing to notice here is the order. So here we have X followed by Y, and when we actually go to calculate the precondition, we start with Y, and then we do x. This matters because they are performed, as I stated before, in order from left to right. So it's going to be a different result if you were to first do the x substitution and then do the y substitution. So you want to always make sure that if it appears in this order here, you're going to swap that order when you actually perform the substitutions for your um, for calculating your precondition. And again, it's the same idea. You're going to take this. Um, this statement here, this program, you're going to apply it to your post condition, and that's going to give you a valid precondition. So you're taking your post condition, you're applying these substitutions, and you're doing them sequentially this time instead of simultaneously like you did on the left. So that's the general idea behind how you would do these um, these substitutions for, um, for uh, multiple assignments or individual assignments. So let's go through some examples. So let's start off with this example here. So we have a question mark here. Um, basically, we're given some statement and some post condition, and we are asked to calculate the precondition. So if we were to break this down into the constituent parts, we know that this is P. This is our precondition, which is unknown, and that's what we want to solve for. This is our assignment or our program or our statement S, and this is our post condition R or, um, or Q, depending on the format that you want to use. So if we were to go ahead and start doing this, we know um, this is a single substitution. We're only replacing one variable x, 
And that means, based on our rules from before, we know that we can do R with X mapped to E. And that's going to be a valid precondition if we are given some assignment for one variable and some post condition R. So in this case, this is our post condition R. This is our assignment. This is our X replaced with E. So our E is going to be X squared. Our X is just X. And so in order to calculate a precondition, we can use this formula right here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So uh, our R, we know, is X greater than X times Y. So we have X greater than X times Y. And we're going to perform the textual substitution here. So we're going to take all occurrences of X. We're going to replace them with X squared, because we know that our E is X squared. So this is really what the question is asking us to find. And now we can go ahead and just perform the textual substitution. So looking at the substitution here, we know it means we're going to take all occurrences of x and we're going to replace them with x squared. So we've got two occurrences of x here. So let's go ahead and replace those. We're going to end up with x squared greater than x squared times y. And then we can go ahead and remove the unnecessary parentheses there to get x squared greater than x squared times y. So this is a valid precondition for the Hoare triple that we were given. And if we were to put it all together and rewrite the entire triple, we could write it like x squared greater than x squared times y with all occurrences of x replaced by x squared results in a state where x is greater than x times y. So this is the overall solution if we were to plug back in the precondition that we just found. That would be the solution to this problem. And this is a valid triple. All right, let's take a look at this example now. So again, we have a single substitution. We're only substituting for uh, one variable. And we want to find our precondition. So we know that this here, this is our precondition, which is unknown. This is our statement or our program. And this is our post condition. We're just going to call it R. All right, so since we have a single assignment, again, we can use the same formula. We know that R, with all occurrences of x replaced by E, is going to be a valid precondition if we're given this type of um, assignment and some post condition R. So what we can do is we can take our post condition, we can apply our textual substitution, and we can calculate a valid precondition from that information. So we know that our post condition is x is not equal to 5. That's our post condition. And we're going to apply the textual substitution such that all occurrences of x are replaced by 5. So this is really what the question is asking us to find. So we can go ahead and just perform the textual substitution. We know that this means take all occurrences of x, replace them with 5. We have one occurrence of x here, so we're going to end up with 5 not equal to 5. And we can remove the unnecessary parentheses to get 5 not equal to 5. And what this basically demonstrates here is that this doesn't necessarily have to be a true statement or a theorem um, in order for the entire triple to be valid, because this is still a valid precondition for this given assignment and post condition. And again, let's plug it back in and make the entire triple. So we have 5 not equal to 5. And we're going to say x is becoming 5. And then our post condition is x not equal to 5. So this would be the entire Hoare triple for the problem that we just solved. So taking a look at this example here, again, we have a single assignment. We are just assigning uh, the variable x. We're not doing multiple assignments. And we're given some unknown precondition that we want to solve for. This here is our statement s. And this here is our post condition r. So since we've got a single assignment happening again, um, we can use our formula from before. So we've got r with x replaced by e is going to be a valid precondition for some x replaced by e with some post condition r. So in this case, this here is our e. Our e is x plus 6. This is just our x. And we can go ahead and plug in what we know to this formula for the precondition. So we know that our post condition is x plus y greater than 20. x plus y greater than 20. 
And we know that our x replaced by e in this case is going to be x replaced by x plus 6. So this is really what the question is asking us. So now we can go ahead and perform the textual substitution. This is telling us let's take every occurrence of x and replace it with x plus 6. So we're going to do that. We have one occurrence of x. Let's go ahead and perform that substitution. So we have x plus 6 plus y has to be greater than 20. We can remove the unnecessary parentheses to get x plus 6 plus y greater than 20. This is the same as x plus y greater than tw uh, 20 minus 6 because we've subtracted 6 from both sides. And that results in x plus y greater than 14. And that is the valid or one of the valid preconditions um, that you can get for this Hoare triple. So if we were to plug this back in um, and get our entire triple, we're going to have x plus y greater than 14. x becomes x plus 6. And x plus y greater than 20 is our post condition. So this would be the entire valid Hoare triple for that problem. All right, so let's do a problem that uses multiple simultaneous substitutions. We know that these are occurring simultaneously because of this comma notation. They're not separated, which means we're going to perform both substitutions at the same time. And again, we're calculating our precondition. So we have this assignment statement S, and we have this post condition R. So if we recall the formulas from before, we know that we can take R, our post condition, and we're going to apply our textual substitutions to it. And in this case, since we're swapping two variables, our textual substitution is going to look like this, since we're performing the simultaneous substitution of both x and y. And what we're doing here is we're taking all the x's, we're, we're turning them into y's, and we're taking all the y's and turning them into x's. So essentially, we're taking x and y, and we're swapping them in our expression. And this is going to be a valid precondition for some x, y mapped to y, x, and some post condition r. So this was our formula from before. Let's go ahead and plug in what we know to this formula for the precondition so that we can start calculating it. So we know that our post condition r is going to be x greater than y. And we know that our textual substitutions here, we're going to have x comma y, and we're going to swap it for y comma x. Um, and I just realized I didn't put this in general terms of like E and F. Um, I ended up just subconsciously writing what was given in the problem, but really this would be like an E and an F in general. But in this case, we're using Y and X because we're switching X and Y. So anyways, this is what the problem is asking. We've got our post condition X greater than Y, and we're going to perform this substitution on the post condition to see what we get for the precondition. So the substitution is basically take all occurrences of X, switch them for Y, take all the Y's, switch them for X. So if we perform this substitution, we have this one occurrence of X and this one occurrence of Y. We're going to perform both of these swaps simultaneously. So if we go ahead and do that, we're going to end up with Y is greater than x. And we can remove the unnecessary parentheses to just get y is greater than x. And this here is a valid precondition for the Hoare triple. So if we were to put it all back together, then we would get y greater than x. And then we would have x and y being replaced with y and x respectively, and x greater than y. So if we were to begin in a state where y is greater than x and then switch x for y, we will terminate in a state where x is greater than y, which should hopefully make intuitive sense as well. So this would be the valid completed Hoare triple for this problem. OK, for the last example, let's do two sequential substitutions. So here we have a substitution for x and a substitution for y, and they're separated by the semicolon here. So we know that these aren't being performed simultaneously. They're going to be performed in order. Um, so this is our assignment statement s, or I guess statements in this case. This is our post condition r, and this is the precondition that we are looking to solve for. An important thing to remember about this formula is that the order that these are given to you in the problem is going to be opposite to the order that you should um, you should use them in performing your textual substitution. So in this case, they give us x mapped to y, semicolon, y mapped to x. 
But what we want to do in our substitutions is we want to take r, and then we're going to do y becomes x, and then x becomes y. So in this case, we're performing this substitution first, and this substitution second. So we have swapped kind of the order that they appear when we're actually putting them into our formula for our precondition. Um, and again, this would yield a valid precondition based on the formulas from before. So we can go ahead and plug in what we know. So looking at this, um, oh yeah, I've, I've done it again, but I guess in general terms, this would be some E or this would be some F, this would be some E. But in this case, um, we are swapping Y for X and X for Y. So if we were to plug in what we know from our problem, we know that R is X plus Y equals one. And we know that we're going to first perform the substitution y becomes x, and then we're going to perform the substitution x becomes y in that order. And that's because it is opposite to the order that they appear up here. So we're going to go ahead and perform this substitution first because we have to go from left to right with textual substitutions. So we first perform y becomes x, so we're going to end up with x plus x equals one. And then we put big brackets around the whole thing and we leave this substitution because we haven't performed it yet. So now we can go ahead and perform this substitution. Now we've got two occurrences of x that we need to replace. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to end up with y plus y equals one. We can remove unnecessary parentheses and add these two together to get two y equals one. In other words, y equals one half. So this is a valid precondition that would satisfy the Hoare triple. So if we were to write it out um, as a whole, we would end up with something like y equals one half, x becomes y, y becomes x, and x plus y equals one. And again, this makes intuitive sense because you're going to end up assigning one half to x and one half to y, and then one half plus one half is going to give you one. So this is the completed Hoare triple for that example.